Greetings to everyone, Saints. We would just want to say that we love you so much. And there's just nothing you can do about it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's just, yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. And I pray that you are too. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Saints, you know, sometimes you can lay down. You can have a dream. Sometimes. Amen. You can lay down and have a dream. You wake up and you like, Lord, wait, um, wait, 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 wait. Okay, what did this dream mean, Lord? What did this dream mean? You ever had a dream like that? You wake up and you're like, Lord, what did this dream mean? Like, Lord, you know what? This is going to be bothering me like all day. You know what I'm saying? And to be honest, um, sometimes the Lord will have it that way. Amen. Sometimes the Lord will have us to have dreams because he wants it to bother us all day. Amen. He wants us to ponder on it. He wants us to think about it. He wants us to talk to him about it. He wants us to turn that thing over and over and over and over. And this is one of the ways that the Lord speaks to us. Amen. When we, this is, this is why he told us to meditate on the scriptures. As we meditate on the scriptures, this is how the Lord has taught me, amen, to. And this is how the Lord, one of the, one of the many ways the Lord speaks to me is through, through doing this, amen. And uh, this is one of the ways the Lord, this is actually the way the Lord told me. Uh, one of the one of the greatest revelations I ever I've ever known came through this method, which is turning those scriptures over and over and over. Amen. And um, the Lord just gave me such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful revelation, saints. And if you are serious about the Lord, if you are serious about your walk with the Lord, saints. Then you need to revelate this revelation. Amen. You need this revelation. Amen. Um, this revelation didn't come from seminary school. As a matter of fact, I've never heard anybody that went to seminary school. I'm not castigating seminary school. I'm not castigating any type of school that people go to to learn about the book, the Bible. But I will say that I've never heard none of them tell this revelation amen and it shows me that the bible is right amen it shows me that the bible is right um it shows me that the bible is right um this is one of those things where you know people go their separate ways because everybody has their belief system you know what I'm saying? And their belief system is just, it becomes who we are. What we believe becomes who we are. You know what I mean? And so with that being said, I've always asked the Lord to not let me be so much of myself until I can't receive revelation from the word of God and not change. You know what I mean? I've always asked him, Lord, don't let me be so much of myself until I get a revelation from the word of God and I still choose not to change. That's dangerous. That's we become self righteous when we get to that point. And I never want to be to that point. John chapter fourteen and verse twenty six. Um, let's do twenty let's read fifteen real quick. It says if ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Okay? I will not leave you comfort, comfort. Okay. It says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while. 
and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, because I live, ye shall live also. And that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So these this is this is deep right here. See, he says, I'm gonna manifest myself to this person. You understand? He he didn't say that. He said, I'm going to manifest myself to this person. He didn't say that there was going to be an introduction. Now there's now a lot of times when we go witness, there is an introduction as far as I'm introducing you to Jesus. But when when after that introduction, Jesus is like, I got this. Yes, this person keeps coming back. You know, perhaps to learn about me. But as far as me and this person's relationship and me, I'm the only one that can really teach them who I am. You know what I'm saying? Uh, You can tell them all you want to, but it's going to take me to come and really teach them who I am. You know what I'm saying? So he says in verse 21, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he, this person, it is that loveth me. And I'm only going to manifest myself to those that love me. So a lot of times, these schools and different things, a lot of times, we don't have to love God in order to learn about him. But the, when, but the way the Lord says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to manifest myself, because these people, they might know of me, but I, I am me. And I'm going to manifest myself to you. To who? To this special one right here that love me there's a lot of people that go out there and there's there, there's a dime a dozen those across the waters they'll email me hey i'm trying to get to bible school but i don't have the finances and this and that and i tell them straight up that is god what you mean that's god i'm trying to learn more about god no god is trying to tell you that you're you're that he understands what you're doing but you're going about it the wrong way if you want to learn about God, go to God. Right? If you want to learn about me, come to me. You can go out a dime a dozen to people that claim they know me. And they might tell you about me, the, the me that was in the past. You understand? They might tell you about the me that they heard of. That's connected with this lie and that lie and, and this hypothesis. But if you want to know who I am. You might want to come and sit down and talk to me. Do you understand? Is that that simplified? So this is what he's saying in 21. He that has my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I shall love him. And will manifest myself to him. And this is one of the greatest revelations the Lord gave me about himself. He manifested himself to me because I love him. Amen. I haven't been in school, not not in no seminary school or Bible school, none of that, not one day of my life. But yet, the Lord is still manifesting himself to me. Amen. And so while I can get choked up on the particulars of of what thou and thus mean, that nobody's going to hell from what thou and thus mean. Amen. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I, and, and I'm not kicking against anybody that's went to school. I'm not kicking against anybody that's killing themselves to go. I'm not kicking against anybody trying to find the finances to go. But I am saying <clears throat> that the Lord told us right here in the scripture. Here it is. Said, loving me and I will manifest myself to him. Judah said it to him, not Issachar, Lord. Not Issachar, Lord, how is it that thou shalt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Means we're going to live there. And that lo- he that loveth me, not keepeth not my sayings, and the word 
which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. This is the Bible. These are the words. This is line upon line, precept upon precept. Here, little, there, little, not skipping any words. These are the words. These are the words from Abba Father. These are the words from the Lord. We say we love the Lord. We say we cherish the Lord. We say we believe in. We're walking by faith with Father, with Jesus Christ. So these are the, these are His words in verse twenty six. But the Comforter. Which is the Holy Ghost. Whom the Father will send in my name. He. Somebody say he. See you don't want to say he but it's okay. So say whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Pin drop. It's a pin drop because a lot of times we feel like because we don't want to go through the courses of life. I don't want to go through the courses of life. But in order we can go and learn, we can sit under the greatest apostles, the greatest prophets, and still don't know nothing. Nothing. We can sit under the greatest pastors, the greatest evangelists, the greatest teachers, and still don't know nothing. The disciples sat under Jesus and still he's trying to tell them what's going on. And they're just like, huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. No, they had to go through the courses of life. And, uh, and when, when, when the Lord said walk by faith and not by sight, that's what he mean. Yeah, I'm going to teach you, but you ain't going to be sitting up in no air conditioning thinking that you're learning about me. No, you're going to walk yourself through this course of life, and I'm going to let trial after trial hit you across your head. And then I'm going to see. I'm going to try you. I'm going to test you, and I'm going to see. Is my word there? And then if it's not, I'm going to tell you what you did wrong. I'm going to show you. Okay, see this? Now, this is what I meant by this. And this is what I meant by that. You don't sit down and tell a child, look, okay, now, I'm going. To, this is how you walk. First, you're going to stretch your muscles. Keep stretching. You keep stretching while you're sitting down. Keep stretching. Okay, now, you. after that, then you're going to stand up. And then after you stand up, now you're going to try to find your balance. You Nobody te- nobody talks to their, their kid that way. You know what they do? Courses of life. Come on. Give me your hand. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. We're going to walk. Oh, my legs are wobbly. I know your legs are wobbly. But this is preparing you for what you're about to do. Well, I can't stand. I know you can't stand. But guess what? I'm not going to sit here and hold you because I got other stuff to do. But I'm going to let, I'm going to put your hand, one hand right here, one hand right here on this table. You hold on to this table. And when you get tired of standing up, you'll sit down. But I'm going to, I'm going to let you hold on. You hold on to this table right here. Or you hold on to the step. Or you, you going to hold on. This right here, this course in life is going to teach you. A lot of times we're lazy and we don't want the Lord to teach us. You know why? Because we it's too much other stuff that we can do besides let the Holy Ghost teach us in life. And a lot of times, this is why we find ourselves in a mess. This is why we find ourselves self-righteous, religious. This is why we find ourselves this way. You know why? Because we choose our own path when the Lord says, I'm going to teach you all things. I will instruct you. But you know why we don't want the Lord to instruct us? It's too many stipulations. What do you mean that uh, uh, he that hath my commandments and not just that and keep it them because it's easy for me to learn. You know why? Because I'm smart. I'm intellectual. Oh, look at me. I can just hold knowledge. Look at my big head. Okay. And he that hath my commandments. Oh, now I got to keep them too. I can't just have them. I got to keep them too. I tell you what, I'm going to bypass that. I'm going to go over here. Y'all let me know so I can sound educational. So I can sound like I know something. He that have my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. 
And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. That's just too much. That's just too much. But see, it's not too much when we stand before the Lord claiming that we've done this and cast out devils in thy name and done many wondrous works in thy name. And he said, get away from me, you iniquity worker. You know why? Because you tried to find your own little way through life. When I told you that I'm your teacher. And you're too busy. Don't want to walk by faith. Nah, we done found another way. Oh, 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 you found another way. Is that what you did? You found another way? There's a way that seemed right. But the end thereof, death, destruction, chaos, confusion. But the comforter is the Holy Ghost. Whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all. He shall teach you some things. He shall teach you a little bit. He shall teach you. Um, he going to teach you what Paul and Silas and all the rest of them do. He going to teach you. It, it says he shall teach you all. All things. But you know why? You know why we choose our own way, saints? Because we don't we don't think much of the Holy Ghost. Now we won't say it. You know why? Because we talked about this in Pi Beans time past. We won't say it because it just don't sound right. It don't sound right when it comes out of our mouth. The Holy Ghost we, we that the Holy Ghost can't teach me nothing. That them folks over there can't teach me. That's what it is, saints. Today, that's how people feel. The Holy Ghost teach me. Nah, all this sense I got, all the, all this intellect I have. The Holy Ghost. I'm gonna wait. You mean to tell me that I'm, you think I'm finna sit here and wait on the Holy Ghost to teach me something? Look how far I am in life. No, you think you don't got far in life. That's what you think. You think you've gotten far in life. And it's easy to get far in life, but it's hard to elevate. See, that ain't got nothing to do with the ground we walk on. That don't have nothing to do with knowing this person that know that person that know that person. And hey, celebrity, that ain't got nothing, ain't got nothing to do with none of that. We can, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can go far in life, but can you go far in God? See, this going far in God out of our control. Oh, out of out of my control. And if it's out of my control, I don't want to do it because, you know, it's out of my control. I can't pick up the phone and call somebody and boom, the door is open. I can't you know because this is out of my control. I got to find some type of avenue where now it is in my control. Now I can learn all the knowledge I want to know. And I can still be smart as I want. And I can still feel religious and proud. I can still feel like everybody else is dummies. I can still look at them and say, y'all doing it the old way. That's why you can't never go nowhere. That's why you can't. That's why you're still where you're at. That's why this and that's why that. Y'all doing it the old way. We're doing it the smart way. We're doing it the way the Lord told us from the beginning. We're the children of the day. And the children of the night can't comprehend the children of the day. There was a tree in the beginning. There was a tree of knowledge of good and evil. And there was a tree of life. In these days, people cannot gain enough knowledge. Once they get knowledge, they got to go back and get more knowledge. And go back and get more knowledge. And go back and get more knowledge. Go back and get more knowledge. Go back and get for what? But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid.
So the Holy Ghost, there it is in the scripture. The Holy Ghost teaches all things. Now you go and tell somebody that's intellectual this, and they'll laugh at you in your face. You know why? Because you you slow. Talking about the Holy Ghost don't teach you all things. Revelations the Lord has given me, they have not one time spoke of these revelations. Not once. They haven't. Because the Holy Ghost is not going to let it be. He's not. He's not going to be outdone by a man. Really? So our best bet is to go with the Holy Ghost. Ain't that right? He has bread that's hidden in the word. It's hidden all day long. And we just skip right over it. You know why? Because it's only going to be revealed when he wants it revealed. Any type of revelation that the Lord give, most oftentimes, people that are a lot of people that feel so intellectual, these are the ones they shun the revelation knowledge of God through Christ because they didn't learn it somewhere else. Ain't that stupid? Holy Ghost. That's who we ride with. That's who we roll with. We roll with the Holy Ghost. Because times are getting dark, saints. And when COVID, when, when that virus came through here and these churches started shutting down, you had to know something. Yourself. You you had to you had to believe. You had you had to. This is all we had. All we had was what we knew. Times are coming just like that and even worse. And if we don't trust in the Holy Ghost now, we're not going to make it. If we don't start seeking for the Holy Ghost right now, we're not going to make it. Them people, the people we go get knowledge from, they, they weren't telling us how to stay alive. But God knew. He's our keeper. You wonder why you got a whole bunch of, thank you, Holy Ghost. You wonder why you got a whole bunch of people that talking about they say, and these the biggest sinners you ever want to see. I'm talking about they mouth filthy, nasty mouth. You got a whole bunch of people talking about they say they go out in the street. They naked as a jaybird. Talk about Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Naked as a jaybird. That's the first thing he gave Adam and Eve with clothes. Put some on yourself before you go out there. Before you go out this house. Put some on your body. Cover up your nakedness. You people, that's just religious. No, you religious. You religious because the Lord, because he tells us all through the word. But guess what? We religious. We self-righteous. We want to do it our way. You know why? Because the preachers tell you, you can come in here naked. Can't nobody tell you nothing. You can come in here showing your titties. Can't nobody tell you nothing. You can come in here showing your butt. Can't nobody tell you nothing. And you come in the house of God showing your nasty titties and your butt. Yeah, you're going to go out in the street showing your titties and your butt. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. First thing he did was gave them skins. Cover yourself up. Not today. Today, it's the way we say it is. That's fine. That's fine. It's the way, it's the way. It, you, you, you're right. You're right. You're right. It is the way you said it is. It's the way you said it is. You just keep going on your merry little way. There is a way that seemed right. And you might still get a little revelation. You might still get a little knowledge. But there's a way that seemed right. When they stood before the Lord and they say, but Lord, we, we, they, they weren't talking about no little revelations. 
No, 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 no. These boys, these was the big boys. And the big boys, guess what they were doing? No, these boys weren't sitting in front of no camera talking about this. No, no, these boys weren't in the pool. No, these boys was going and casting out devils. Yeah, real devils. It wasn't no play play like what you see at church today. Where they are, they just all just, everybody just looked like this. It's a hey, it's a chaotic mess. No, they were really casting out devils. And they still got turned away. That don't scare you. That, that don't, that don't, that don't shake you and wake you up to let you know, I better really get outside of my stinking flesh and see what God is saying today. What is the Lord saying today? What is he saying right now? It ain't, well, that's your conviction. My conviction, I can come out, I can show my, I can show this and I can, and I can, I can, I can, I can. All right. Those that have an ear, they will hear what the Spirit of God is saying. The Holy Ghost teaches us all things. You might be like, well, I, I wonder what the type of dream Rain had. I'm a, I, I might just might share that dream with you when we have time. But that dream has nothing to do with what the Lord is saying right now. Amen. That dream, it wasn't upsetting. It wasn't not an upsetting dream. So these are the things the Lord is desiring to say to us today. Today, today the Lord takes the pen and pops us, those of us with the big head, think we doing something. Ain't doing nothing. Wasting time. The Lord like, (sighs) when you get done thinking that you can go out and find this somewhere else, when you get done, you still going to come back and do it the way I said it. If you make it to the kingdom of God, you're still, when you get done, you're still going to come back and walk this course of life. You're still going to do it. I'm still going to let trial knock you upside the head. I'm still going to make you stand on that table. I'm still going to make you get your legs strong. You think you know it all. You think you know, huh? Yeah, when you holding that baby and then you eating your food, you eating that steak and that baby trying everything he can to get a part of that you eat. Don't even know. If you put it in his mouth, he's going to choke on it. He ain't even got no teeth trying to eat some. You know what I'm saying? But you just, you just trying to get it. Let me, I'm just going to go out here and get it. Go out here and get it. And the Lord is like, I've, 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 I've sent the way before I even. I, <sighs> Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I sent the way before you were even born. And you just trying to find a way, trying to, and I'm like, this is your journey. This is the course of your journey. This is the timeline of your journey. This, welcome to the walk by faith and not by sight. So while you're so fast trying to go out there and get it, you're still going to come right back to this point. You're going to come back and you're going to walk this walk by faith. And you're going to realize that the Holy Ghost is going to teach you the way I have said it. The Holy Ghost is going to instruct you. The Holy Ghost is going to show you that you don't know what you thought you knew. The Holy Ghost. You know why we don't talk about the Holy Ghost a lot? What we need him for? We got teacher after teacher after teacher after teacher. And that's why you got a whole bunch of Christians. They are not saved. They are not saved. They are, they, are, they are the biggest sinner you ever want to see. They believe in porn. They believe in, in, in sex outside of marriage. They believe in having more than one wife. They, they believe everything. You know why? Because Holy Ghost, what we need the Holy Ghost for when we got this man flesh, that man flesh, this woman flesh, that woman flesh, this, 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 and this can tell us everything we want to know iniquity workers why because we bypass the holy ghost why would you send the holy ghost i'm going to send the holy ghost to those that what love me thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments not millions do you know millions of people are saying i'm saved millions of people are saying i'm a christian billions of people are saying i love god you don't love god what's wrong with you but the lord said Thousands of them that love me and do what? Keep my commandments. 
So what's going to happen to the, the, the remainder of those millions? We love God. You don't love God. We love God. What's going to happen to them? Well, they found another way. What's the other way? The easy way. No, see, they thought it was the easy way. The devil tricked them to think it was the easy way, but it wasn't really the easy way. It was the devil's way. Bypass the Holy Ghost. You don't need that. Because you know why? The Holy Ghost going to tell you about you. That's why. I don't want to learn about me. I want to learn about God. No, God is going to put that mirror in your face. He's going to put that mirror in there. And a lot of times, we don't want no mirror. That's why we shun the Holy Ghost. That's why. This is why we don't talk about the Holy Ghost. This is why we don't put the the spotlight on the Holy Ghost because uh I can whatever I learn I can do that's fine and it's good to come and learn but then the Holy Ghost is gonna walk that thing out and show you the Holy Ghost this is this is where we getting the the the, the trials and the tribulation and persecution all of these things that come to to work a patience inside of us a patience the word patience goes against the whole world completely the word patience you ain't did this by now you ain't did that but now you ain't did this you ain't did that the word patience it goes against the world yeah patience patience goes against the world's belief standard in everything, it goes against what the world believes. Patience. Yeah. Patience goes against what the world believes. So the Lord says, I'm going to let y'all go through trial, tribulation. Yes, let them have fun. I know they're having fun. But that's why I told you to keep your eyes on me and I'm going to keep you in perfect peace. Perfect peace to know that when they go out there and they do this, that's fine. Hey, wish them, hey, that's good. Hey, that's great. That's great. That's great. But this is the course I got you in. You're going to walk by faith. You're going to let this life be your coursework. So your graduation can be eternity. That's what you're going to do. Well, Lord, uh, I like this idea, but it just don't look right. Because everybody else, they, you know, they're going to look at me and they're going to think this and they're going to think that. And they're going to think this and they're going to think that. And sometimes that's the downfall of people. What other people think. But other people think it. Other people. That's the downfall of people. That's the downfall of people. One thing David did. David reverenced God. Mm-hmm. David, that's one thing David did. David was a lot of things. David committed adultery. David had a man kill. David killed a lot of people. But one thing David had. And one thing That David never bragged about because I don't believe David knew it. David had the heart of God. David had the heart of God. But the thing about it is, having God's heart, it didn't stop God from letting David's baby die. That didn't stop God from doing that. David had the heart of God, but it didn't stop David from dying one day. It didn't stop David from dying. David had the heart of God. David, I believe, had God's heart because David was a worshiper. David, um, David took his thoughts to the Lord. David never one time tried to appear right when he was wrong. When it came to God, you understand? Now, while he was in the scheme of things, he sent the letter by Uriah. 
and Uriah was killed in the heat of the battle. But when David came to himself, and that's that's a lot of a lot of times some of us we don't come to ourselves. We don't never come to ourselves. You know why? Because we've been preached not to. We've been preached. It's always somebody else. It ain't never me. It's always somebody else. The reason this happened. We don't never, 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 never been shown the mirror. This is how hideous you look. This is how nasty and foul your spirit is. This is how nasty. This is how selfish you are. This is how smart you think you are. You don't know crap. We've been preached and and teached and taught that. Yeah, don't worry about it, sister. It was her. Yeah. Yeah, sister, it was her. Uh Uh-huh. She need to get herself together. No. No, it's you. Don't worry about it, brother. Uh, Don't worry about it, brother. Yeah, it was him. Yeah, it was him. Yeah, I, I know it. I know it. Yeah, it was him. No, it's you. I tell you what, I gave him five dollars. I gave her five dollars. You know, they never did pay me back. That's your behind. You understand? Now I know the Bible says, uh, he that borrows and don't pay back is like wicked a wicked person. But you keep putting your posi- yourself in that position to get money borrowed from you. You keep doing it. And if you look at it, it's one of those things where you feel like you need you want to be needed by people. It's, 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 you want to be needed because those that are tired of, I'm tired of you borrowing from me and you're not paying back. They make themselves, they, they put, there's a way you put a space <laughs> and, and those of you that know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. There's a way you can put a space right there in between you and the one that can never keep their word, right? There's a way you put a space there. Amen. There's a way you put a space there. And with that being said, they don't feel that easiness to come and just keep doing that. But if you just keep opening yourself up to it, that's your fault. That's your fault you need to feel needed. That's your fault you want to have something else to talk about. A lot of times that's what it is. I'm going to give them this because I know this is somebody else I'm going to be able to talk about because I know you ain't going to be able to pay it back. That's your fault. That's your fault. You know, such and such. Yeah. Yeah, I like such and such. Yeah. You just want to be in the in crowd of the ones that, that's talking about her or talking about him. You just want, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times we can save ourselves from stuff, but because we got this little fetish, this, this, this little fetish with, you know, something in our spirit ain't right. Because if it's, if our spirit is right, we'll say, look at her brother. Look, I'm going to let you get this, but I, I, it offends me. You know, now I'm not saying that I know when I let you bar, I'm not supposed to look for it back. But when you come to me as your sister and you say that you need this, it, it, it makes me feel good to know that you feel enough about me to want to pay it back. Even if I'm not looking for it back, it makes me feel like I really am your sister and you really do care about me. If you act like you want to do this, to do right by me. It's not about the money. It's about you treating me like I really am your sister in Christ. Do you understand? Baby, yeah. Baby, yeah, I let him get $5. I, I already know. I'm, I already knew I wasn't going to get to bed. Yeah, I already knew. You, that's just something you want. You can't wait till these folk walk up to you and ask you for $2, $5, $20, $30. You can't wait. You can't wait till they leave to pick up the phone. You know, yeah, you think I'm going to get to bed? Huh, yeah. <laughs> you can't wait. You know why? Because we're not going through the course of life correctly. We got so much time on our hands. When the Lord says, this is a walk by faith, he says, I'm walking with you. I'm guiding you. I'm leading you in all truth and righteousness. But because you have neglected the Holy Ghost, now you got time to lollygag and talk about a whole bunch of stupid stuff. Stupid, stupid stuff. Life passing you by. The courses of life Passing you by because you thought you went and got it somewhere else. You ain't learned nothing. You ain't learned nothing. 
You ain't cried about nothing. You ain't bled. You ain't sweat. Nothing. No trials. You ain't turned up gold. You ain't, you ain't got the courage to get in the fire. They didn't tell you you had to get in the fire. They taught you about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No, you gonna get your behind in the fire. Well, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't prep me for that. No, they didn't prep you for that. It's the word that preps us for that. David. David had the heart of God. David was. David was the man. Yet David had. Many. Many things that. Because David was in flesh. And the Lord understood that David was in flesh. The Lord understood that. But what the Lord does. He does his calculations. Yes, he's going to calculate flesh in. He calculates the heart in. He calculates our actions and what we do. He calculates his scripture in. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So what does that spirit, this person's spirit, what does their spirit say? And a lot of times we walk around with the wrong spirit. So when the Lord calculates what is our spirit saying, it goes against us because our spirit been our spirit's been wrong for years. For years, years. Wrong spirit, wrong heart, wrong motives. Wrong, just wrong. Just ang, X, ang. Repentance is needed. David had a heart pointing toward God. Even though he messed up, he had a heart pointing. His heart was pointing toward God. That was a pod bean years ago that we did. We were talking about the shark and how people, they kill sharks. Especially the sharks that bite people, they kill these sharks. But but the pod bean, the, Lord, the way the Lord gave it to me was, why are you killing the shark when your nosy behind is in their territory? You, you, you're, you're where they live. They're not on the ground where you live. You're where they live. And then when you get bit, you want to kill something. You understand? You're where they live at. So when you get bit, then you want to kill it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When you get bit, then you want to kill it. You're where they live. So the sharks, when they bite people, they bite the leg. Uh, most often times... There's a study that I did. The shark rarely ever eats the human. The study that I did said that sharks don't even like the way humans taste. The reason, and most often times, humans get away from the shark. It's not because humans are fast. It's not because humans are smart. It's because the shark don't really want to eat the human in the first place. The shark want to, to scare that human off. Get out of here. So they bite the leg or bite the arm to tell that human, get out of here. Get away from here. You know why? Because my family is in here. And I know what y'all do. Y'all devour. Y'all destroy each other and everything else in your pathway. Get out of here. I just had kids. Get out of here. Wife. Get out of here. Husband. Get out of here. So they bite you. They bite the person. The person, ooh, get out of the water. The shark, he, he bit me. Bam, 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 bam. Shark dead. Why? The Lord also bought out that the shark is born with pointers. It can't help it. That's his DNA. It's born with those fins, those fins that point. So anytime we're in the water, la, la, la. And we see that pointer sticking up out of the water. 
We know that's danger. What do we do? We run. We get out of the water. We want the guards to come. We want somebody to come and get rid of the shark, even though it's in its territory. Uh, so we want somebody to come and get rid of this shark. Oh, the shark, the shark, the shark, the shark. And why? Because we see the pointer. So many times what we've done, because the Lord made us with pointers as well. Those of us, children of the day, we're pointers. We point back to the Lord. We're mirrors. We reflect what the Lord wants. Why? Because we walk aright in his statutes. We look in the mirror of the word. We manifest the mirror of the word. Because we're keeping the commandments. The Lord sees it. He loves us. He manifests himself to us. The Holy Ghost teaches us all things in truth and righteousness. And then we go forth in the world. And our lives point. We don't have to say a word. But our lives point. Our lives say, well, I ain't heard her say nothing foul, but my mouth foul. And I'm a woman. She a woman. But why do I look more degrading? Because my mouth is nasty. But her, but she don't look degrading because I don't hear no foul words coming from her. Why do I look degrading because I'm out here naked? She covered and my man all looking at her and she ain't showing nothing. And, and our lives begin to point. And people don't like that. What what, what 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 can I do about it? I ain't said nothing to you. I ain't, I ain't I haven't said anything to you. But but my life, your life, it points. The Bible said, "Be submissive to those who have rulership rulership over you." Hey, we're at work. The boss said, "Do this." Now the boss has left off. I'm still doing what the boss said. Y'all not. Now y'all pointing at me. I ain't did nothing to y'all. Why y'all pointing at me? Because you're showing us what we're supposed to be doing when the boss ain't here. What? Yeah. And a lot of times, because we, as a people, we want to be loved and, and caressed by the world. We want to be loved and caressed by these pastors that ain't even saved. By these leaders, apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers that ain't even saved. We want to be caressed by these folks. And because we want to be caressed by these folks, guess what we do? Let me go and get me a, um, a nail sharpener. I'm finna dull my point down. Let me dull my point down. Let me dull this point down. And as, and then, and then, then, then they look at you. You ain't dull enough. Okay. Let me dull it down some more. Let me dull it down some more. Let me dull it down some more. They look at you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Why? Because I don't make you feel no kind of way no more. Cause I'm looking just like you. No standards. Oh, I'm preaching and teaching. No standards. That's right. So we look at David. And David wasn't perfect. David made mistakes. But David had something that we can we can't we can't brag about having. Because a lot of times when a person has a heart the heart of God, a lot of times they don't know it. Because they're going through the course of life with such intense and they know that they're going through the course of life so that and they know that they're getting graded on everything and they know that god is watching and they know and they know and they know and they're learning more and the holy ghost is teaching them more and more and more on their walk by faith you don't have time for the rest of it they don't have time to say oh look at me this and this no we don't have time for that because the course is at hand there's a grade in the balance God is watching to see have I passed this so I can move on up, move on up, not move on down the road. The road, the road going to be uh, ashes soon. The road, that road, that road. But see, we're traveling now another road that they don't, they don't deal with these carnal feet. They don't deal with that carnal vehicle we try to go get. They don't deal with these this carnality stuff. What is the Lord saying to you today? <sighs> I had a dream. The dream that I had, 
before getting on pot bean was my mom had came in the house and she said that was she held up some type of toy it was a toy she had some type of toy and she says there was something outside that swallowed this toy whole and we're looking at the toy and we're like ew right because the toy looked pretty you know like it was like a big size toy you know when i say big size I, maybe no bigger than a pen you know but it was like you know a little wider than a pen and i was like they're like a writing pen. I was like, we were like, what? She's like, something out there that swallowed this thing up. And I was like, man, that's crazy. So then she's like, y'all be careful when y'all go out there. All right. So then a little time passed. And I went out. But when I went out, I had kids with me. I had maybe three or four kids. Some a little bigger, some little. I had a puppy. I remember a puppy. And I had like a little toddler. So I had like maybe, I had kids with me and a puppy. Went outside. And I looked underneath the stairs. And I see this. Now, and I, and I see this, this thing. And it looks like a serpent. Not, I mean, but it's little. Like this thing is, is, is little. It's, it's a little bit smaller. All right, it's not like a big snake, but it's like a, just imagine the size of a writing pen, but a little bit longer, maybe two pens together. All right, and then it was a little wider. Okay, but this thing looking weird, it had like the tail of maybe a fish or something like that, but the head looked almost human, a little bit, a little bit more humanish, but it was little, you know what I'm saying? And I'm looking at this thing, and I spot it, and it's underneath the step. And I'm like, I tell the I tell the kids because the puppy, the kids are waiting for me to say go play. The puppy is waiting for me to say go play. So the puppy is just all around my feet, and the kids are just all around me. So I'm like, y'all wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I send the kids go get, go get mom, go get mom, right? Go get mom. I sent the kids to go get my mom because I wanted my mom because she's like, whatever this thing is, it swallowed this. So I wanted her to see what it was. Now, while they had went to get mom, I told the puppy, go play. So the puppy took off. So I'm sitting, I'm, I got my eyes on this thing. And it's just underneath the step. And it's moving a little bit, but it's not moving out of its place. So I knew it was alive. And while I'm sitting looking at the thing, I have their scissors in my hand. All right. Their scissors in my hand. These scissors appeared in my hand. And I had the authority right then. And I had the tools to chop this thing in the, in the, in the neck. I had the tools to cut the neck off of it. Right. This is why I'm talking about David a lot. I had the tools to cut it. I had it in my hand, but I'm sitting there and I'm watching it. If it had to start moving, I would have cut it. I would have killed it. But because it was in one place, I just had my eyes on it. And I'm like, go get her. Go get her. One of the kids came back. I, I couldn't. I, I can't find her. And I, and I told the other one, go get mama. Go get her. Go get her. Go get her. I wanted to see what it was. Right? So I'm standing there. And I got the tools in my hand. And I'm watching. I got my eyes on it. And then way after a while, there's another adult that comes out of the house and comes down where i am they come out of the house with the scissors they come underneath the they 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 move me and cut the neck of the thing and then it's like (sighs) and then went back in the house and i was just sitting there like, I still got my eyes on the thing. I took my scissors and in the dream. I took my scissors and I redid what they did, which was, you know how, like, a, let's just say a, a parent can 
hit a kid, just hit them on the arm. And then when they leave, maybe another kid pick at them and act like they act like they hitting somebody on the arm, but it's really picking at the other kid that got hit. Well, I wasn't picking, but I just redid the motion. Like I put my scissors down there and I redid the motion. The thing was already dead, but I just redid the motion uh, with my scissors. And it, in the dream, it wasn't that I was scared. I wasn't scared. In the dream, it wasn't that I wouldn't have killed it. Yes, I would have killed it in the dream. But I wanted my mom to see what it was. This is, this is what it was. She was like, whatever this thing was. And I wanted her to see this is what it was. You understand? But when the other adult came out and just, and just went back in the house like it was nothing. I was like, when I woke up, I said, Lord, what in the world does that dream mean? I just like, I'm like, Lord, you know this is going to be bothering me all day. Literally, I had the scissors. Literally, I had my eyes on it. Literally, I was going to kill it. I just wanted my mom to see it. This is what, you don't You don't have to wonder, this is what it was. You know what I'm saying? If the thing had to start moving, I'd have killed it. So, that that's how I was in the dream. When I woke up, I'm like, Lord, I don't understand. Like, what, 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 what? And this is what I have. First Corinthians, first, I mean, first Chronicles chapter 22. Then David said, this is the house of the Lord God. And this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. And David commanded together to gather together the strangers and were in, that were in the land of Israel. And he said, ma- ma- masons to hew raw stones to build the house of God. And David prepared iron in abundance. For the nails, for the doors of the gates, and for the joinings, and brass in abundance without weight. Also cedar trees in abundance for the Zidonians, and they of Tyre brought much cedar wood to David. And David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be built for the Lord must be exceeding magnificent. Magnifical, of fame and of glory throughout all countries. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. And he called for Solomon his son and charged for him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. David said unto Solomon, my son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, <clears throat> Thou hast shed blood abundantly and has made great wars. Thou shalt not build an house unto my name because thou hast shed much blood unto the earth in my sight. Now, the other adult that came out of the house was not my dad. For those of you that might be like, well, I wonder was her dad. It was not my dad. <laughs> it wasn't my dad. Amen. But the other adult that came out of the house, they just, it just, just, with nothing like pop and I was like that just wasn't the it wasn't that I wouldn't have killed it but it's that I just wanted mama to see what it was and the only other thing that I could like my mind went to scripture immediately when I got up and I'm like Lord that was that's, that was a physical killing and maybe the Lord is telling me, I don't want you to do a physical killing. But I took my scissors. And I after the, after the adult went back in the house, I took my scissors and I redid the motion. Amen. So today, it's time. It's time for us to repent. 